Hello, this is Gernge with another quick tip video. This one is all about Redshift's interactivity speed, or time to first pixel. There are a couple tricks I use often and some settings to watch out for if you feel like the Redshift render view isn't responsive enough. To start things off, let's examine a render and see what's contributing to the time to first pixel, or rather, once you click the start button on the render view, how long until you see anything happening. There's a pretty important distinction between interactivity speed and final frame rendering speed. In the bottom corner of the render view, we have a bit of text saying what the engine is doing while a render is starting up. So let's break this down. But notice I will begin with a default render preset. The only change I've made is resolution width and height. If you'd like to know more about some of the render settings that I use, I've got another video for that. Link will be in the description. So we have this default rendering preset. I'm just gonna duplicate it by control dragging. So that way we can compare and contrast the performance between the default and our modifications. Next, we can disable hardware ray tracing. If you have a compatible NVIDIA graphics card, we'll see a small message down here saying initializing optics. Yeah, right there. So this is a good setting for speeding up your final rendering time, but because it comes with a prepass, it is a bit of an interactivity speed hit. So we can disable that. While we're in the same menu, Another thing we can disable is the tessellation and displacement. Although note, you might need tessellation and displacement enabled for your particular scene. I tend to avoid it, so I'm gonna disable it. If you would like an easy way to toggle on and off certain settings, what we can do is right click and hit add to HUD. We'll do that as well up here. And if we go back to our viewport, we see that we have these small little messages. I can control click and drag these and now I have an easy toggle on and off. I prefer to work with these off to improve interactivity, but at the very end, I'll make sure to turn them back on. Okay, hopping back to the render settings, another section we will investigate is the system settings. I'm going to make sure to disable the material stacking and the procedural UVs. Another bonus is sometimes these are a bit buggy and they will trigger the render view to restart unnecessarily, so I definitely prefer these off. Moving over to the render view itself, we have a couple options that we can configure. First of which will be IPR undersampling. So note that higher numbers will make the render more and more grainy at the very beginning in exchange for faster interactivity. I think two is a pretty good starting point. Next, we have a few icons. These snowflake icons, one is freeze tessellation and the other is freeze geometry. So maybe you're working on you know, some lights or adjusting material settings. In that case, we can use these icons to tell the render engine that we are no longer changing the objects. So it'll skip those calculation phases. Just make sure to disable them when you're done. All right, now that we've got some of these settings configured, let's hop out of this camera, which will send the render. So we can get a pretty good idea that things are moving faster now. If we toggle back to our default setting and turn off the render view settings that we just made, we can compare and contrast. Things are definitely not updating nearly as fast in the default settings. Last but not least, there are some preferences we can change as well. Hitting Control E, and we jump to our render and then Redshift. We want to make sure to disable the CPU mode and also disable hybrid rendering. Just in case these wind up toggling on or impacting performance, since the GPU mode is significantly faster than the CPU mode. Additionally, we can disable the material previews. Feel free to experiment with this option here, but I prefer to have them off. Depending on what build of Redshift you have installed and whether you use the Expresso nodes or the new node graph, your performance may vary. The vast majority of the time, I work with the previews disabled. It means your shader balls will appear as black, but I rely on good naming convention and strict use of layers for organization. You'll really be surprised by how much of a difference this makes just selecting nodes and being able to edit their settings. And that'll cover everything for this tutorial. I really do hope that these tips help speed up your time working in Redshift, so thank you so much for watching it.